Um, okay. So, uh, best practices in virtualizing and managing Microsoft SharePoint with System Center and Windows Server. My name's Simon Skinner. I'm a Microsoft MVP. Um, and uh, let's, uh, let's get about this. So I've uh, put together a quick agenda so we can have a look at how we're going to go through this. So I'm going to try to do this logically right from the beginning right through to the end. So we're going to start off with our planning. Uh, and then we're going to move to deployment. And then we're going to go to monitoring, because after we've deployed and everything's going, that's where our problems are really going to begin. Uh, and then we're going to look at the protection. And then we're going to come to the conclusion. So let's have a quick uh, audience poll. This is uh, where you get to put your hands up. So um, who in the audience is a SharePoint administrator? OK, that's too many. Uh, who's hosting SharePoint? OK, that's cool. Who's using System Center already to administer their SharePoint site? OK, so there's a, there's a lot fewer of you. Um, none of the above, but you still have an interest. Okay, cool. Um, so we've got challenges and we're looking for a solution. All right. And uh, you're in the wrong session. All right, that's good. That's a good start. Oh, so what you're not going to hear about in this session, okay, I'm not going to say that. We're not going to talk about best practices in Hyper-V, although I do somewhere along the line contradict that. And I'm not going to talk about Hyper-V clustering and, uh, and, and the full networking stack. OK, so in the planning phase, first of all, what can we virtualize? This is something we hear quite a lot from people. They're saying, exactly what can you virtualize? You know, we've been told to virtualize. We've been given all these tools to virtualize. What aspects, what components can we actually virtualize? So first of all, Active Directory Domain Services, and I've put a little star at the end there, because providing you're using Windows 2012 Hyper-V, you can now have your ADS servers virtualized, because they're not dependent on Active Directory to get your clusters up. So that was a problem before. Front end, web end, uh, front end web end servers and your application servers, absolutely, we can virtualize those. They're, they're like a no-brainer. They're the first things. The SQL Server, what about that? Can we virtualize that? I mean, today on the Microsoft stands, people were still asking us, can we virtualize SQL Server? Yes, you can. Every single aspect of it. As long as you're running uh, on SQL Server 2012, you can virtualize every single bit of it. And we're going to go into that a bit deeper. So any part of SQL, any part of the ADF, ADS, as long as you're on a 2012 server with, with a 2012 cluster, and any part of SharePoint 2013. So does size matter? Yes. You wouldn't build a SharePoint uh, uh, virtualized site for 1,000 uh, uh, end users in the same way as you would do for 100,000 users. So we have to apply a certain amount of logic in our planning of how we go about that. So it absolutely, it does matter. So I wanted to put this slide in. I want to make a clear and simple message. What you're going to see in the next couple of slides means that it is supported, and you can do it, and it's been tested. So general, and this is a new word I've created this week, is v-supportability. So this is the v-supportability guidance for our SQL Server. As long as your Hyper-V are running on from right back to 2008 Service Pack 2, right through to 2012. And as long as that, that could be the other people, as long as it's supported under the SVVP, um, or Windows Azure, SQL supported. The guest OS has to be uh, 2008 Service Pack 2, or preferably Windows 2012. So how many people have actually migrated and using 2012 already for their server applications, for their, their, their OS? So all SQL Server 2012 features are supported in a virtualized environment. Let's have a look at the SharePoint. So for the v-supportability guide for SharePoint, again, 
The Hyper-V can be going back to 20, 2008 Service Pack 2, as long as it's 64-bit, um, right through to uh, as your uh, infrastructure services. Guest OS, again, must be uh, R2 Service Pack 1. Slight difference there for, for SharePoint or 2012. So all SharePoint 2013 features are supported on those servers for the guest OS, which is... You got a question? Um, as in the fact of being supported, it wasn't fully supported all the way across. Some, some aspects of it were not supported. In 2013, all aspects are completely supported. So virtualizing SQL, here's the, here's the, here's the thing, yeah? So with, with uh, uh, 2012 in Hyper-V, Enterprise Strategy Group tested existing uh, SQL servers, and we can see that the workloads work fine. Now, when I first started to deal with, uh, uh, with virtualization, in my head I was like, oh, well, I've got, a, I've got a node here, and it's got uh, four processors, and I've got, uh, uh, I've got a lot of RAM. I've got 32 gig of RAM. And to me, at the time, that was a lot when we first started to do it. I was like, we've got all this stuff. I've got these four processors, and I would just build a VM, and I'd build another VM, and then I'd build another VM, then I'd build another one. Then I worked out how to do that automatically, so then I just pushed the button and that built a load of VMs. And then I was like, this is pants. This isn't really working. But actually, there's a bit more to it than that, because like, we need to have hosts that can support. Now we can have up to 64 virtual uh, CPUs, and we're going to see that it does make a difference. And this is where I was saying size does make a difference, that we need to actually have the hardware underneath to be able to support that. So we can then virtualize. So um, the same again with, with, with SharePoint. <clears throat> Using 2012, we can see across the board that everybody, every single aspect works and has been tested and performance stack up. And again, for the, uh, 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 for the performance of SharePoint. Providing that we're using eight virtual processors, 12 gig of RAM for the front end web server. So this is where it makes a big difference. We've got to be able to have the, the, un, the actual underlying resources in our hardware so we can effectively be able to utilize that in our virtualization. So key virtual uh, hardware considerations. First of all, weights and resources. So SQL for uh, uh, so SharePoint will be a one-to-one. -one. So if you have one physical processor, you're going to use one virtual processor for that application. You can go to a one-to-two, but it would be, more, it would be a, a, a supportive feature to just be a one-to-one. -one. Dynamic memory. SharePoint, no. SQL, yes. I mean, I'm not uh, an exchange uh, expert or anything, but in the exchange, you can't use the dynamic memory. It's not advised to do that. You can push the button, and you're using dynamic memory. It's not advised to do that. Synthetic uh, VNICs, so obviously with the, the, the new uh, features within 2012, we've got much more facility around what we can do with our network cards. For our storage, now we have the v VHDX, which supports up to 64 terabytes. Separate uh, VHDX, no snapshots. But how many people have been to 2012 session for R2 for Windows Server? And they may have made some announcements around that. Well, I'm just going to stick on what, what we actually know. Uh, virtual uh, fiber channels, guess iSCSIs. And finally, for our, uh, for our host storage, direct storage, SMB, fiber, iSCSI, SAS, SSD, etc. For our, sh for our SharePoint, see, uh, we can now support up to 64 physical servers, 8,000 uh, machines up to a virtual, cl up to a cluster. So in our SharePoint farm, we just want to make sure that we have the correct specified uh, hardware. But how do, you, how do you know that? Where, where does the threshold start? 
I think actually it was you <laughs> in our session, we actually came back to you and we said, um, it's an easier question if I want to go to New York and I say, which car, which mode of transport am I going to use is an easier question than saying, I've got a car, where do I want to go? And when you're scaling out your, sh your, your farms, your SharePoint farms, be clear of where you want to go. Be clear how many people are going to use this. What's the demand going to be? Are they going to, uh, the pumps are going to be able to like, build on this, see it's a really cool idea, and then they say they want to add all these extra features. We need to make sure that we've got uh, our hardware kitted out that will be able to support those features. So obviously, uh, um, live migration is now uh, uh, supportive for virtualization of SharePoint, which is kind of a useful feature, specifically if you, you're for patching, etc. cetera. Uh, cluster aware updating. I don't know if anyone's using that in 2012. That was a big feature that we can do the cluster aware for the uh, software updates. Uh, if you want, to, well, if you, uh, you have two, say you've got a couple of physical hosts and you actually need to patch uh, hardware on a physical host, okay? So you want to migrate your stuff off to another box somewhere so you can physically go and upgrade that. that that's. Uh, Sorry? Oh, no, no, no. No, no, it's uh, actually for the, for the host machines. Especially, uh, and there was a couple of service providers here, for example, they're in a really bad place when it comes to patching. They've got to patch, but at the same time, they've got to keep things going up. Where's your audience? Could be in Australia, could be in California. You know, it uh, gets, gets more and more complex, especially when you spread multiple time zones, uh, for example. Okay, um, so let's have a quick look at best practices, even though I did say that I wasn't going to do this, so we've got some really, really basic stuff. And some things change in, in R2 here, but um, first of all, leave adequate memory. So for the Hyper-V partitions, we recommend a minimum of four gig of memory. That's, when we read these uh, 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 documentation, they say use a minimum of this, just times it by three and you'll be in a much better place. <laughs> that, that's actually an issue because people do read that and that's what they they don't read the word minimum <laughs> and the next thing you know you've got an underutilized farm well, well yeah I agree so, so, so the next time you read documentation it says we recommend then your slot in there Simon says because <laughs> that, that's a song isn't it or something um, so uh, uh, yeah so that is, documentation always follows what's happening in reality. Don't use the par uh, parent partition for services other than Hyper-V. Um, and don't, uh, don't store the computer files, like your paging files, etc. Okay, so pretty, pretty uh, logical. Um, network cards, use a minimum. So that would be four then, wouldn't it? Uh, use a minimum of two network cards. Don't have all the traffic going down one network card. So you, you've got your general uh, uh, networking traffic, you've got your management traffic, you may have your live migration traffic, etc. You may have some sort of cluster awareness traffic. Use separate network cards. I think there will be some announcement coming out one day about how that may change. Uh, again, so don't oversubscribe to CPU like I do in, in my, my lab. I have I, uh, uh, way oversubscribed because I have dynamic memory and I can uh, and have uh, weights on my, uh, on my processors. But make sure, you, especially with SharePoint and SQL, you stick to a one-to-one -one with a maximum of one-to-two. Um, don't cross your boundaries for your uh, uh, new mirror, for your memory. Don't use snapshots in a live production environment. And it's really handy to do that, isn't it, really? Because... Uh, you want to make a configuration change, and I've done this. You want to make a change, and you're not entirely sure what the outcome's going to be. 
So you think, I'll make a snapshot, and then it works, and you're that excited, you go off and you tell your buddy that it worked, and this new thing, and you did this PowerShell, or blah, 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 and then three weeks later, someone says, it's not really working very well. Ah, oh, yeah, I forgot, I still had that snapshot. So configure the Hyper-V host uh, computer. So avoid running antivirus programs. This is a real thing with SQL Server as well. Avoid the antiviruses. It, you've got to be able to make some allowances for your, uh, for your antiviruses or just don't have it. Try to use a slap for the second uh, le uh, level access uh, address uh, translation. And if you can, use Hyper-V threading. Oh, that was the wrong way around. So what are our options for deployment? You can do it manually. It works every time, more or less. We can use uh, System Center Configuration Manager. Is there any guys in here using SCCM? OK. Um, we could use Virtual Machine Manager. Any people using Virtual Machine Manager? OK. Next couple of slides, I think more of you will use it. Anyone using Orchestrator? OK. Or get someone else to do it. That's always my favorite. So let's have a look at uh, um, VMM, Virtual Machine Manager. So we, we went through this whole phase of people saying, we can use this tool, and it's going to build this VM. And we could use this tool, and it's going to build this VM. And we could do it while we're in bed. And whatever is, you know, and I was like, this is great. I, I don't really care about servers and computers. I'm more interested in my applications. I need to get an application on. So Virtual Machine Manager, now you have service templates. So this service template we're looking at here, what we've got is we've got it broken down. So the first section where it says my SharePoint farm, my SQL tier, then I've got my app tier, my application tier, and then I've got my WFE, my web front end tier. So what, what's going to happen here is I've got some configuration going on at the back of this. So this is a whole subject, so I'm just going to talk about this. Um, I've got some configuration going on the back here. I've got some scripts. I've got some code that's going to go and off and create uh, some AD accounts, because we need to do that for SharePoint. I need to do that for SQL. Um, I need to build my, my VM to actually run it. I need to then make sure that it's got the minimum of 4 gig, if you like. And I need to build my network. But with a service template, I can do that. Then what I can do is I can just press the button, and that is going to go and build a whole SharePoint farm without you touching it. So if you're a service provider, for example, that's a very exciting thing. It also means that if you have a template that you spend a little bit longer configuring, a little bit longer to just test it. After that, you can reuse it and reuse it and reuse it. Then we can go crazy. Then we can say, well, now I have this accelerated deployment. I want to automate my accelerated deployment. And I want to be able to use it in, in, with other tools with inside the system center suite. So. Now I can automating my accelerated deployment. So for example, I take my, my VM uh, template. I'm going to use a runbook with, uh, within Scorch or Parlet or Orchestrator. I can deploy it with Service Manager. So I can have a ticket. Someone can raise a ticket. Say, I need a whole SharePoint farm. OK. So then that can go off and create a workflow. It means the manager then approves that. Um, when that manager has approved that, it continues with the workflow. It then goes and finds the best type of e-service to run that. Then it goes and runs the templates that we saw previously. And then it automates that and goes off and creates my, my SharePoint farm. And where would that be? Well, if it's in the companies in the org's private cloud, I don't really care. I don't really care where it is. All I know is I need my application. And I want to be able to automate that. It's hosting ready. And it's client deployable. So things are sort of changing. Whereas 
before we absolutely did not want the client to deploy an infrastructure. I mean, just think about that. We don't want to do that. But we can. But we can now do that. We can build the infrastructure. We can build the templates. We can build the configuration where we want it. And then we can give the end user that it's not necessarily Sheila in HR or something, but it may be a department that needs a SharePoint farm or some front end web servers or something, and they can ask for it. And their general manager says, that's fine. And then they find the, the, the most space on, their, uh, on their, uh, their Hyper-V site. And then they get an email to say, it's up. And this is one of the, one of the beauties of uh, managing it with System Center. So when we saw not so many people using System Center, these are great reasons to use System Center because we can automate that process. And as much as I don't want to say this, but if you take out this, a lot of the uh, repetitive day-to-day -day human uh, tampering, our problems will be less. Now, I was, uh, um, my, my girlfriend last week had, uh, gave birth, and uh, while I was in this hospital, um, being sort of this uh, reasonably geeky, semi-geeky guy, I was, as I was walking along the corridor, I saw uh, like a robot, and this robot was making very definitive movements to retrieve some boxes and then disappeared off into a lift. And I'm standing there with my daughter, and I'm saying, the, not the one that was born. But I have started, though. I have I've started her on, the, on, on track already. So um, I was explaining to her, I said, that's awesome. I said, because like, if we told a, 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 a person to take two steps forward and two steps this way, I can guarantee you, you come back in half an hour later and they're just making one diagonal movement. They've made a change. And it's the same in IT. I was thinking about it. It's the same in IT. If I did that in... In, in, in a scorching orchestrator, I say, I want you to do this, 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 and this. I'm more likely at the end of it to have a better product. But we've configured it. But it's a better way of doing it because it will repeat those steps every single time until you tell it to do something different. So System Center helps deliver the IT as a service. And before, we've always considered that to be something that we do over the internet to clients, but we can do it for ourselves inside. IT has always been a service. So now, the skomish bit, I think some, so I heard uh, uh, it, it referred to just now. Um, what does the SharePoint 2013 monitoring pack actually monitor in SharePoint? So we had quite a few people raising their hands earlier on that they are a SharePoint administrator. Now I confess at this point I am not a SharePoint administrator, but I have to monitor SharePoint sites within uh, uh, operations manager. So the first thing to do is to actually, for me to spend a lot of time with some SharePoint administrators trying to work out what they do, why they do it, and how they do it and then try to find a better way of making that happen without changing what they, you know, their thought process. So we can monitor the, uh, uh, the server, the SharePoint server. It's a pretty no-brainer that we would do that. Project server. Anyone's all now using project? And it, I, it is awesome. I was straight over to the Office 365 people yesterday and I was like, can you do project in Office 365 now? I really want that. And they can. It costs more than Office 365, but I'm sure that was another question. But it's a great project. It's a great uh, uh, product. And in fact, we're using it, for example, in our dev. We use it for our dev stuff. And, um, but it, 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 needs problem, you know, it needs monitoring. It, it, we need to be able to see what's going on with it. Access services. I think that's become even more of a thing now in, in uh, uh, SharePoint 2013 that we can have an access back end. Push a button, it goes off and creates some stuff. This is always the worrying thing to me with, uh, with uh, SharePoint in general is that end users can build things. It all seems a bit worrying to me. 
business connectivity, security token services, managed, web, uh, managed um, meta web services, education services, Excel, info, performance, performance point, don't appear to use that, translation services, I ran out of space so I had to start over here, sandbox, secure ser store, SharePoint search server, user profile services and the Visio services. It is a mean beast, the operations manager uh, uh, management pack. And I don't know how many people are, are using SCOM. It's actually one of the better management packs. I think it was written by someone that really knew about SharePoint. So let's uh, uh, go about the installation, the installation of our, of our file, the installation of our management pack. So it has to be done in a particular order. So we can go and download the management pack from, uh, from the Microsoft sites and we can install it ourselves. But it needs to be done so the foundation server goes on first. Just because of certain discoveries that go on, etc. So it, it has to go on first. Then afterwards that we can have our SharePoint library. If you do it through the console, it will put it in the right order for you. Even if you get it the wrong way around, it will take care of that for you. Now, is anyone using the SharePoint management pack? One, two, right. And how many people have upgraded it from uh, um, uh, 2010 to 2013? How many are running on 2013? Okay. I just thought I'd ask that. It doesn't make any difference. Not really. But if you did need to upgrade, there's an XML sheet, uh, XML file that you have to make some changes to. I'm going to show you that in a minute. And we need to do something around that. So this black area here is this XML. And we need to add in there uh, a run as account. I'm sure we're all familiar with a run as account. And we need to put in the name of our, of our SharePoint servers. Anything that's running the SharePoint on, it needs to go into that. Once we have that configured, once we've got that information in, and this is where people slip up the most uh, with the uh, implementation of the SharePoint management pack, is exactly this area. So we just need to think about how we're doing that. As the documentation says, just stick to that name. Stick to the naming convention that Microsoft give you. So where it says the SharePoint discovery and monitoring account, and you want to change that to something else, don't. Just leave it as it is. Because later on, with an up upgrade or something, they may change that name or whatever. So just stick to that name. It, it, it's really uh, much more beneficial to do that. What we can also do is, because SharePoint is such a vast such, uh, such a vast uh, product. There's lots of discoveries that need to go out. In this X, uh, XML file, we can change some of those discoveries. We can say, for example, I want it to go off and discover a service and run that discovery for an hour and then stop and then go and do it for another hour and then stop and go and do it for another hour. Or I could do it however I want to be able to do that because I may be a hosting company and I don't want to have anything that's going to affect the, the performance of my, my application, anything that, is, that does anything is going to have some sort of an impact somewhere. The management pack guide uh, states that it only recommends you monitor and manage one SharePoint farm per SCOM installation. Have you seen any issues with like putting a dev test and a production SharePoint farm into SCOM for, ma for monitoring and managing? In, in fact, yes. The problem is, is that um, I don't know why, but the problem is in SharePoint, not with Ops Manager, for me. So um, when SharePoint creates a database, it comes up with the most illogical string of numbers I've ever come across in my life. So when you build that, you go, wow, that's a really long name. Well, where's all that? Where's all that? You know, it's like it's like some sort of hash code or something. I think they... Uh, 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 so then you create multiple databases and you have multiple of these illogical names. This is my terminology. 
uh, and they don't make any sense to me. I understand the beginning, but then, then they have this whole string of stuff at the end. So then when you have a, pro a, uh, a production domain, and then you have a dev domain, and they're in the same domain, and I've seen that, then you're like, well, which is which? You know, that's one of the, uh, one problem. Um, also, um, the, it's, it's just to understand which is which, which, what belongs to what. If you, if I started from scratch, I believe in, in SharePoint, when you create a, 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 a service or whatever, you get the chance to rename it. I, I would do that. Because I, I've gone to companies and they say, yeah, there it is. Right, lovely, thank you very much. Do you know what does what? Oh, no, you're the expert. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yes, you can do multiple farms in one. You can do that. And it's net is better in 2013 than it was in, 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 in 2010. But it's, a, it's around the actually understanding what you've got, I think, is, for me, the bigger issue. I, I did actually ask uh, Microsoft a question before this session, um, and I didn't get a response back in, in time um, about, but, uh, to put it into my slide, rather, but if you want to do an untrusted SharePoint farm, like a client's, for example. Yes, you, it can be done, because SCOM will allow you to do that. But again, you've got to be really careful how, uh, when it all comes into the management packet, it it's kind of gets a little bit confusing. OK, so um, at a quick glance, this is one of the absolutely uh, important slides you'll see and it's certainly in my presentation. I guess that makes it sound like it's not a very interesting presentation, doesn't it? Um, but someone says to you, uh, I've got a problem. Okay, um, we've got a problem with our, with our SharePoint site. Okay, what's the problem? Yeah, we've got a problem. Okay, cool. Any idea what it is? Yep, see you later. Okay. So this is a DA, a distributed application. This is something that runs within SCOM. And you can, see, you can start recognizing those icons because you're SharePoint guys. And you can start to look at this, and it starts to make a little bit more logical sense to you already, I'm guessing. So we can see that we've got some red crosses. And we can see where they are within our infrastructure. So it's irrelevant how large our infrastructure is. It's irrelevant if it's dispersed over several offices or data centers. I can go to this already pre-configured uh, distributed application and I can open it up and I can say, that's got a green tick, I don't care. That's got a red tick, I'm going to investigate that. So if you imagine a clock, okay, uh, so your clock's got 60 minutes on it. Typically, with the, what, how IT works, is someone will say, I've got a problem. You've got 15 minutes to find the problem. Now you've got 10 minutes to fix it. Okay? It's not going to be a good fix. But if we had this application running, then we could say, well, I'm going to find it in 10 seconds. And now I've got the rest of the hour to be able to think about what I'm going to fix. I'm going to do a bit of research in what I'm going to fix. And potentially, I could do some documentation in the same amount of time. Now, there's another key factor that comes along with this, with this program. And that is, when we speak, we speak to organizations a lot, and they're like, yeah, you know, one of our biggest problems is, is that we, we send these guys off on SharePoint training courses. We send these guys uh, uh, for operations manager training courses, and they get really good. And then our SharePoint site works awesome. And then they leave. They go uh, because they get offered a better job with a consultancy company. And it happens. Now, with here, we get a certain amount, and we're going to see this, but we get a certain amount of uh, intel back from our alerts. So actually, we're learning on the job. And we're learning in a way that suits me per, uh, particularly very well. I'm learning in a way that I'm not being told by someone. I've got time to absorb it and my own speed to, to, to understand that. And I can um, also, the fact is, I can make a mistake and find it and no one else knew about it, which I always think is a, is, is a plus. 
But I can also extend it now because I can build out on this DA and I can extend it to my routers, my switches, my firewalls, my hardware, my DNS. Because someone might say, I've got a server running slow. And my SharePoint farm is running slow. So people, you know, they're like, right, oh, right, okay, let's go and have a look at the SQL. I'm going to run all these SQL queries. That I've been dying to run all these SQL queries. Um, so now we've run all these SQL queries, and oh, it's not that. What is it? You know? And then we find out, in fact, that we had a hard drive going to fail on one of our clusters. So that goes back to our clock. So I could have a, uh, build that out, and I could say, with the Dell or the HP management packs, IBM do one, Acer do one. Um, uh, but you can import them, and it will tell you what's going on with your hardware. So you have a complete one pane of glass view of what's going on with your SharePoint site, what's going on with SQL, what's going on with DNS. There's so many aspects of our networking, of our, 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 um, our infrastructure that are dependent on each other. So SharePoint Health Analyzer, was that a godsend for SharePoint or what? How many people are using that? Is that only available in 2013? 2010. 2010 it came along. I mean, when we presented that at uh, Vegas about three, four years back, and it was like, it was the big thing. It was, it, you know, it was, it was great. But, so we, we've got, on the left-hand side, we've got the, sh uh, the health analyzer definitions. There's all the SharePoint administrators in here that are using it will recognize that. And on the right-hand side, we've got those same rules in SCOM. So what happens if I write one in the health analyzer? Yeah, automatically, it will build that into SCOM, automatically. And now I can have a look, I can, uh, 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 and it, to me it's more logical because I've got my red at my top, I've got the yellow in the middle there somewhere, and I've got my green at the bottom because I don't care about the green. That's, that's a problem that um, is, is not even worth thinking about. I've eliminated that that's a problem. And I can just go to my three typical, uh, my three critical alerts, and I can focus my time on that. Are you, you going to say something? Well, there is that. But let's just say, <laughs> um, someone asked me yesterday, they were like, I keep getting this little, oh, I had this threshold error pop up the other day. What do I do? I said, delete it, see if it comes back. <laughs> but the thing is, is that we're now, we're able to take our SharePoint to our Ops Manager. It's an automated process. We don't have to go understanding exactly what's going on in Operations Manager. What we do need to know is the alerts. And your SharePoint administrators so you'll be able to pick up on those lights. It will make sense to you. But it's put in a very logical way. And also, you're away from the immediate temptation of playing with something. Let's be, let's be open and frank about this, yeah? Because that's the first thing. I mean, I, I worked with this guy once. Previously, I worked for Glaxo. So I had this guy called Jared Barr. He would see an alert, and within 30 milliseconds, he was banging away on the keyboard. What are you doing? Oh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to do all this stuff. No, just take your hands off the keyboard. Let's think about this. You know, we've got all these wonderful tools that allow us to think and, and make a better decision. Let's take the keyboard away. So it makes our life a lot easier. So um, for, in, our, in our SharePoint, uh, for our diagnostics logging, and I think you guys use something called a ULT, don't you, in the, in the hive? And, and is that where you're doing the most of your, your bugs and your, 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 your problems in the ULT? ULS. Yeah? The ULS log. ULS, sorry, yeah, in the ULS logs. Oh, yeah. Turn them on, do something, turn them off. Yeah, they take up. Yeah, you're, that's where you're at, is it? So we can turn all those on. And then we can see this is what's going on with our SharePoint site, uh, with, our, with our logging. So I'm going I'm to come back to that, the ULS, ULS logs in a couple of seconds. This is something I picked up with a couple of SharePoint administrators uh, uh, last year. So now we're in SCOM. I can see that I've got some stuff going on with my uh, SharePoint health analyzer on the, on the right-hand side. On the, uh, and that's telling me 
exactly what SharePoint would tell me. I have an error in my SharePoint administration, app services, etc. And it's just focused on that point. Now, in, in SCOM, I've got another long list down here that's listing all these other management packs, DNS, etc., etc. And then uh, I've just dug out these ones where I've actually got problems with my hardware, my Dell hardware. So now we have a much greater picture of what's going on, a much, much greater scope of what we can see. And this is, a, this is an important factor. We can actually make decisions based on more factual evidence of what's going on with our servers without doing half as much. But I want to go looking for problems. Who wants to do that realistically? I've got a demo. I'm going to press this yellow button. Here we go. So we can build out whatever rules we want in our health analyzer, and that's what we do as SharePoint administrators. Let's have a look at an alternative way of being able to do this. Okay, so who's familiar with the SCOM console? Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to run through this with you where we're going to look where I've written some rules inside my operations manager uh, environment so I don't have to go looking at those ULS files. I don't want to do that. I've had a look at those things and, and it's, I know there's a special tool for doing that but when I first had to go through that I didn't know there was a special tool and, and I got that and I was like, well, okay, that's great fun. And there's, that's where your problem is. Oh, fantastic. But then you have to sort it out between if it's a medium or a high or a critical or, 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 or whatever. That was a little bit too much of an ordeal for me. So what I decided to do was write some rules that would go into those files, in, into, that, uh, into that file, into the, uh, into the hive, and pick out what I want. So I can have uh, my medium and my high alerts. So um, does that mean I'm going to troll through this, like, could be rather large uh, file? Let's have a look. So within SCOM, I go to my configuration. So there it is. I'm looking for my, uh, there's my string to my hive, to my logs. But obviously, you're going to have to have your logging switched on in SharePoint. OK, that's something you're going to have to do. So then I've looked for my, uh, a pattern for a log file. So I've got to have a name of a server, and then it's going to have a date and then a log. So I've got the name of the server and an asterisk, which means it's going to guess whatever date, because I found other logs in that hive, and I don't want to go searching through things that I don't care about. I want to be specific about what I want to be able to do. So I've picked out exactly what I want um, for, for those particular log files. Now, we've already seen how big those log files are, so I want to write a specific expression for those log files. So I'm only looking for the top line. I don't care about anything below, because anything below was once the top line. Yeah? So I'm just looking for the top line, which is indicated by the pram1. That's the top line. So I'm not trawling through a great big uh, file. All I'm doing is looking at the top line. Does that make sense? So then I'm, what I'm doing is I'm searching for the word high. It's not really that technical, but it does tell me it's a high alert. And equally, what I've done for the, um, for the, 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 for the medium one is in an extremely technical fashion I've searched for the word medium. So now I can pull that information. So let's have a look at, at how they would look. What I've done is I've added some uh, additional expressions in there as well because I, wa I want to pick out as much as information as I possibly can. So um, I've written in there that it's uh, a new SharePoint alert detected from these log files. Um, and I want to pull out that log. And I want to pull out all the information on that, on that log and I want to be able to display just that line. (coughs) 
So what I've done here is I've created, um, I turned the logging off because I agree it does. Let's have some high alerts. Uh-huh. Somewhere that's good because somewhere along the line my ops manager thing has decided not to work. But that's okay, we can fix that. What I'm gonna do is make a quick modification here so we can bring up one of those alerts. Just give that a second to uh, I don't quite know what's going on there. Um but what I'm doing is I'm pulling out the, those alerts, okay? So they're now going to be displayed. Oh, here we go. They were telling me in the speaker room, oh, no, don't do a demo. Just do it in PowerPoint. It always works. And I was going, but people like demos. Okay, let's just assume that they were right. Um, that I shouldn't have done that. No, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing in there. So anyway, what would have happened in an ideal dream world, if you could just close your eyes and imagine with me, um, is that it would have brought back that alert. It would have just told us what's wrong. Okay? It would have told us uh, that we had a problem. Uh, there we go. It's all over. I'm going to press the yellow button. Um, <laughs> that's working again. Uh, Everything is being brought into my SCOM environment. Everything is in the place that I want to be able to, to, to do for, for managing, because that is my managing product. In my mind, SharePoint is not my management product. SharePoint is my application and where my problem is, or could be. System Center Operations Manager, which is now just a component of um, uh, System Center, that's where I'm going to do my monitoring. That's where I'm going to be able to do some, some cool stuff. Now, what we could have done with those alerts is we could do some trending because we can do reporting. Is anyone familiar with SCOM reporting? Okay. So now I can take those ULS logs, that awful uh, ULS logs out of that uh, uh, note, note uh, pad, and I can turn those into some nice reports and I can do some trending and then I can do some pretty clever stuff in my mind. So I can say, actually a lot of our problems are on the SQL side of it or a lot of problems are in my Excel services or whatever. So then I can now, as a, as a, as a manager, as a, as a director or whatever, I can say that's where I need to put my resources. I need to focus my guys on that. That's where my problem is. So I can be a lot cleverer about how I'm using my resources. And I can also do trending off that. I can also work out, uh, um, do I need to go and change a piece of hardware? Because like this problem's happening a lot, and it's down to my hardware. What do I need to do? So it just makes my life, and your life, uh, so much easier. It gives you, go on. Um, that would pick, if you had a hundred servers, it would pick them up from each one. Because your ULS logs, are, you need them from every server in your farm. You don't get them from one. Like when you're using a ULS log and troubleshooting, you need to be logs from every server, not from just one. Yeah, but that will pick them up from every server. It would put yeah, if I, if I had, um, if I taken out, is it when I get near that? Uh, uh, where I've got the, um, like the TFS, if I'd taken that out and just had a star and I had loads of them, because I have an agent running on each machine, from, it would look to that log of that machine. So one of the cool things that we can do in operations managers is we can target. So I can say, only look on these subsection of servers. So only servers that have these logs that exist don't go looking on an exchange server, you're wasting your time. Yeah? Um, so I can pinpoint it, and then it will pick them up from all of them. Because that was one of the things I picked up from the, 
from the SharePoint guys, they were like, yeah, we have to go to this server, and then we have to go to this one. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I want to bring it all right. to me. Well, you don't have to do that in SharePoint anymore, either. You don't? I didn't know that. There's a SQL database now called... There, you have me. My way's better. <laughs> but, all in one database. Right. Yeah. I mean, does that mean that you'd have to start using SQL Server reporting then? As, yeah. 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 My way's better. <laughs> um, but I can I can bring that information back. But also, I'm in a protected environment. We're a way we we can uh, uh, with Operations Manager. I can say I'm going to allocate that to you or a, a certain uh, aspects of, of the operations manager. So, so I can blank out if I'm monitoring also Exchange, I give my stuff to the SharePoint guys, just only SharePoint. I don't, I don't want them to see what else is going on. I want them to focus on, on, on what they've got to be, you know, what they've got to do. So um, it will work across all, all of your environments. And if you had a, your server in, in Singapore, it will, it will do that, which sounds impressive, but it's doesn't really make any difference because we just RDP straight into a machine. We don't really care where it's from anyway. Now, is GOM the right tool for performance monitoring? Um, That's what I was hoping to get out of GOM, but I don't know if it's the right tool. Or not. Yes. There are, um, there are reporting for, for, for performance. And, um, I'm just hoping one day they're going to uh, evolve this because in SharePoint 2010, we can do some a little bit more than we can do in 2013. In 2010, we have a thing called APM. Is anyone familiar with APM? Does anyone know what APM is? We've got one guy. It's the coolest tool on the planet. Right. So I can go and take you to the line of code. So uh, someone writes a line of code and it doesn't perform very well, I can pinpoint that exact line of code. It doesn't, it could be a, Oracle query, because the way that .NET monitoring works is it hooks into something called the CLRs, right? So the CLRs is the runtime language for, for, for our .NET. SharePoint's based on, on, on .NET, so as that application runs, it, it runs executables in effect, runs commands. It says, go and do this, go and do that, and it follows that code. And then you, you set thresholds, which is a big... That's another big question. How do you set a threshold? How do you, you know, you, you just have to try something, but, you know, to actually understand what your thresholds are. But you can see your, your, your code. And it works with Java too, which is nice. It does now. Yeah. Um, That's a different tool than SCOM? No, it's in SCOM, free of charge. Two for the price of one. Um, it used to be a product called Avaco. Uh, which was uh, acquired by Microsoft a couple of years back. Um, and, and now it, 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 it will, we were talking about project server. So this is how I use my project server in, in our organization. So we have uh, our dev guys that write the, the Cody stuff. And then we have these infrastructure guys who hate the Cody guys. It's kind of a... So as they write their code, it then gets automatically t uh, tested um, and then we filter it all into our Agile reporting into SharePoint, okay? And then we can have a look to say what code's working, what code's not working, whose problem is it? And it is nothing more satisfying for the infrastructure guys to say, I knew it was them! <laughs> APM. It's in, in, in APM, Application Performance Monitoring. That's also a, a, a whole new subject. But if you... Um, on, on the Microsoft uh, stands, there's, uh, there's some stuff around APM. It's pretty cool stuff. And it's, uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't really work into the 2013. It hasn't quite been adapted to that. But on, on, on 2010, but part it is part of the System Center product. It, it is totally uh, uh, free of charge. Um, I could probably bring something up there about that. Um, yeah. Let's go for this. So here we go. This wasn't part of my presentation, but it is really, really cool, so I think we should at least 
allow it to see the, the day. But I want to stress, it doesn't work in 2013, yeah? But definitely in 2010. Here we go. Are you saying that sure they're playing to evolve 2013? Sorry? Did you say you're not sure it's being evolved 2013, or it just hasn't happened? It just doesn't work. But it might one day. Um, here we go, here we go. <laughs> She's uh, Well, that's a really good uh, question because system center is the whole thing. Whereas these used to be individual pro pro um, products, we like to call them now components. So when you buy system center, invariably you buy the whole lot. Okay, before I show you, uh, uh, do this, we have to have a little health warning. How many of you are developers? Uh, okay, so you, you, you're probably going to get some of this. I'm going to press that button again. So, um, we know we can pick up exceptions. We can just write that and get them into our event logs. But this is, um, uh, maybe it wasn't best to pick on Microsoft Dynamics, because obviously it doesn't have any problems. Um, but I can see what, um, I can pick out what my problems are, and then I can display what my problems are. Um, and it will tell me, like, for example, this file wasn't found or, 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 or whatever, but that might have been a string of code, okay? I'd probably if I fish for it, it would be a, a, I could find a string of code, and it will tell you exactly what, what's going on. I could have a look at my, my, my variables to that or, or some parameters, have a look at the complete stack, similar events, which is a great thing to know. Um, not many of those, obviously. Um, um, I can have a look at distributed chains because there may be multiple virtual applications running and I can have a look at my performance counters. And this is all part of Operations Manager. This all feeds into Operations Manager for all of these alerts. So if you're a dev, this is your dream. If you're an infrastructure guy, this is the best thing ever because you just can say, eh, it's not me. And we've all done that. I still do it. Um, and then we can, we can do all kinds of trend setting. So um, that's pretty much where, 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 we're, where we're at. But it's called uh, APM, Application um, Performance Monitoring. And we can also do uh, work out all your performance points. It will do you nice graphs and charts and, and all, all kinds of stuff. So it's very, very easy to, uh, very, very easy to set up. And then we've got... Uh, we can see that how that would look in um, in SCOM. So we would uh, we would get an alert that would tell us. Um, and then this is pretty cool. And this is what I was meaning about learning on the job because we have this uh, knowledge base stuff. So we've got a problem, yeah. Uh, and now I can have a look and say, you know, what's the summary? The general causes. What are my resolutions for being able to fix that? It's a great place to be. Huh? Google app, <laughs> Sorry, did you say Bing? <laughs> yeah. This is a great place to be. This is what we want, and this is where we can train people as we go along. But we're doing it in a protected environment. I, I, maybe the people monitoring this stuff, I don't actually necessarily want them to have access to my SharePoint site. I might actually deliberately slow people down to say, whoa. I'm not giving you access to go and make changes, just want you to find problems. And then we're going to decide what the ramifications are going to be. You know, it's a, it's a much better uh, 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 environment to, be, uh, to work in. Obviously, if everything just shuts down, that's a completely different scenario. But this is, this is proactive monitoring. We have to also think about this is proactive. This is looking into the future. This is the crystal ball. We have a problem that's starting to happen. You imagine that? I mean, like, someone asked me, you know, how do you, how do you actually, um, how can you describe that? So, like, you take the car, you, you drive the car, and uh, there will be signs like the car is getting warm, uh, the red light is on, now the car's broken down, you run out of oil. But there were signs, but you didn't pick up on them. 
and they may have been a, a period of time of a month before it became a bigger problem. You know, like a preempting an error on a hard drive failure or something like that. You've got time to think, you've got time to do something, because IT is always about reactive. Oh my God, it's gone wrong. Now you have to fix it and the pressure's on. Whereas we could be like, I, I don't know what this problem is. And that's okay. But we know there's a problem before it's something huge. And that's, that's where we want to be. That's where I want to be. APM is the daddy of setting thresholds. There's more, and that to me is not necessarily a good thing. What is this threshold? Mm -hmm. You have to define that in your SLA to figure out which one. Is. That's not an answer. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are your thresholds? It's so difficult to actually work out what it is. You measure it, it's like sticking your toe in the water. Is it hot or cold? You know, it, it's um, day to day, day to day. You know, uh, someone says, uh, yeah, this is working great, and then they attach it to, for example, a, a branch office that has a, a, a VPN connection, and then all of a sudden those thresholds have a completely different definition, potentially. So, um, I'm going to press this, uh, the, the yellow button again after the very successful demonstration. So the protection phase, this is a key thing, right? Because we want to do the whole circle. We've, we've done the deployment. We've, we've, we've moved on from the, uh, the planning. We've done the deployment. We've done the monitoring. We've got it covered. So can I back up my SharePoint site? We can do it pretty effectively in SharePoint. You press a button, it will go off and do it, and you can do a restore. It's great. You do it once a day. I can do it every 15 minutes, and you won't even know about it. Using DPM, I can go off and I can back up the SQL servers, the databases, every 15 minutes, and there's such a little amount of data, the overhead is absolutely non-existent. I can go and uh, back up my, uh, uh, the actual SharePoint files themselves, and I could then... Uh, uh, do that at a late, you know, so I don't want to necessarily do those every, every uh, 15 minutes. I definitely want to get the sequels done every 15 minutes because, like, if something fails, what happens if it fails at 10 o'clock when your backup set for 11 o'clock in the evening because there's going to be less people using the, uh, uh, the environment? I want to do it every 15 minutes, especially for the service providers out here. Then with, uh, with DPM, we can do our backup. We can store the backup locally, but then we can ship it off to Azure, to the Azure backup. So now we have off-site. That is considered to be off-site for our, for our backing up. We're in a great place here. So let's just, uh, let's just kind of recap on this here. With, with, uh, with, with the system-centered products that we've used here, We've used, virtual machine, uh, uh, we've used Virtual Machine Manager for our deployment. We've got Operations Manager going on for our monitoring. We've got um, Configuration Manager could be doing in there for, for all of our patching. We've used Orchestrator to automate our processes. Now we're using DPM to protect uh, our, uh, our environment. So let's go to the conclusion. That's in the right order. So uh, SharePoint System Center is, is, uh, is protected. Let's just press all of these. Um, SharePoint can be virtualized uh, with Windows Server, uh, Hyper-V. All of the SQL can be virtualized for 2012. SQL Server 2012 is, is the best of date. Now we have all of the, uh, the clustering facilities and we have the always-on facilities. Makes life a lot easier. SharePoint works best on Hyper-V of uh, Windows Server, specifically uh, works awesome on 2012. Obviously, it's not it work, uh, also well on R2. SharePoint with System Center is protected. You've got your, your, your whole, the whole stack is protected. 
Oh, I'm going the wrong way. That's why. So system center for uh, 2012 for SharePoint 2013, it's in the bag. So we've got uh, 12 minutes for, uh, for any questions, but uh, thank you. There's a, uh, I think you have to stand by the microphone so they can pick you up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, for the recording. You're going on channel nine. Oh, Lord. Um, if you don't list the servers in the config file for the SharePoint Foundation Management Pack, will it still go out and find the SharePoint services servers and install the agent where it needs to be, or do you need to designate? Because, again, we've got prod, we've got dev, we've got test. Do I need to designate each one of those servers in that config file? So the question is, is all the, all the servers that have SharePoint on them, do they have to be listed in that XML file? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, damn. Sorry, <laughs> okay. Glad we didn't record that bit. So um, with the multiple farms, uh, how would that make our distributed apps? It, it wouldn't know the difference between them, so at that point, would the DAs even be useful? I know, because it's only, doing, it's only for the discovery. Right. But when it comes into SharePoint, then it, uh, into the management pack, that makes uh, uh, things a little bit more different. With a DA, for example, you would need to modify that DA mm -hmm. when you're doing multiple sites. There are certain aspects to it that you, when you're doing multiple sites, we have to do some additional stuff. Mm -hmm. it, yes, it's possible. But we, we need to do some additional bits and bobs. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. So um, it seems like it's a pretty good tool. Uh, seems like it's yeah. awesome. Well, uh, that, that's great to hear that. Uh, so uh, it seems like you know you can use the VMM side of thing to actually provision all the your SharePoint servers. Yeah. You can use. Uh, the same VMM side of things, you can provision all your SQL side of things as well, right? That's correct. So my, my question in regards to like, you know, various companies got uh, different governance model. So how you actually uh, look at it is that you have an infrastructure layer, you have a platform layer. Uh, on the infrastructure layer, you know, VMM is actually available to you to actually just, uh, uh, you know, carve off your VM. So your, your storage layer and your IP layer, you know, and the VM itself. On the platform layer, you know, I was actually wondering, can we use the VMM and the templates uh, for provisioning SharePoint servers? That's what that template was. Would do that, right? It would you? absolutely do that. So the question okay. is, is does the VMM templates actually deploy the whole of our SharePoint farm? Yeah, that's right. Absolutely, yes, it does. Okay. So, you know, when I was doing SharePoint uh, installs and stuff like that, I was having some problems with App Fabric, and, uh, you know, you have to actually put in the, uh, the switches for, that is correct. For, for distributed cache as well. So with these templates, do you see these kind of problems, or it's actually better, or, you know? Well, actually... Does it uh, take care of this, or, you know, what's the process behind, like, you know, I fill in this template and it actually does all my prerequisites and then off I go with actually installing the binary and actually configuring it. Okay, so when you create the templates, yes, you've got to uh, configure your virtual networks or your, net your networks. You have to be able to configure your VMs. What we've done is we've done, and that's a, like a whole session on its own, but we've configured all of the configurable items inside our VMM, inside of you know, Virtual Machine Manager. And then we have this template that will allow us to run what our configurations were. So as I was explaining uh, uh, before, where the, uh, we can take a little bit more time, because it may be something we're going to do on a repetitive basis, we take a little bit more time to build these templates, and then we can just run them, and they will go and do, uh, what, you know, they will go and do that task. But yes, you will need to build that aspect in. You need to run... Uh, for example, the SQL queries, there's a, there's a place for the SQL query to run in VMM. So uh, in SQL Server, you, 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 you cr can create like a, uh, um, 
a template to build your SQL. You can do the run script to, to do your SharePoint. You can run PowerShell that will go off and run those accounts. So there's lots of stuff going on at the back of that template. And no, you will not be able to do it in a couple of hours. It's a, it's a couple of days' work. Exactly. But once that's done, push a button, away we go. Yeah. The next day, we can do the same. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You know, you know, one of the challenges we have is uh, for our uh, test environments. Like, you know, it's, it's pretty random. Some people come and do your POCs and stuff like that, and integration with other EMC systems and stuff. So I was thinking, how, do I actually, how can I leverage this technology to actually fork off uh, VM with SharePoint and SQL? What I've seen uh, with, a, with one particular company in the UK, they, they, uh, they actually have some online, they have some RDCs that they give out to their clients. So they want to do a POC hypothetically for SharePoint, then they just go and someone pushes a button, it builds a farm, they can do whatever the hell they want to do with that farm, and then they can just delete it. Okay. It, becomes, it, it becomes a bit like the big razor. You know, when you don't want it, you can, we don't care you can just just junk it because uh, it doesn't take us that long to to be able to get it up and and, and you know I've seen people doing that okay I've got a final question then so uh, we have this SharePoint environment in the DMZ so our governance is as such that we need to patch it and uh, every, every, you know we, we can stay behind only two two cumulative you know packages so patching becomes a real problem for us because it's multiple times we got to do it. So can we use this tool for actually patching it, like the SQL side of things, the OS side of things, and even the SharePoint side of things? Do yes. So the question is, is can, we, can we manage uh, and administer our updates by using the uh, system center uh, uh, components? Absolutely, you can. We've got multiple ways of doing that. So we could do it with Virtual Machine Manager when we do our deploy to make sure they've got the latest updates, or we could use another product called Configuration Manager that will be able to automate those updates and time those updates. So for example, if I needed to do a cluster, I can do the cluster in the right order in the way I wanted. If I wanted to do uh, my network load balance farms for my front end web servers, I can do that in, in an order that I choose that I want. So you can administer those updates. And you can do that in an automated way. And then you can report back if there's any failures or, or whatever. So absolutely, yes, you can. Thank you. Thank you. I think we've got a couple more. Oh. Can I, sorry, can I get you to stand at the microphone? To, I know it's a... I, I may have misunderstood the uh, uh, no snapshots, but if... With another tool, you, I mean, it's a policy, I get a policy from my operations manager on any CU or major configuration change that a snapshot has taken. What would be the alternative or what would I come back if, and say, okay, we're not doing snapshots, what are we going to do there? Well, we could, we could use uh, backups. So the question is, is, is there an alternative to, to snapshots? We could use DPM to back up the actual VM for example, and then we could roll it back that way. That, that would be one way that you could do it. It's just that um, you're kind of writing to multiple files with a snapshot, and, and that's where the latency rolls. But if we, we, could use, we could use DPM and roll back, I mean, to, to, uh, for DPM to actually roll back a database or a, a VM is... Is, is DPM part of Yes, it is, sir. sir. No, nope, it's part of the system center suite. And that's the whole thing. That's the beauty of it. It's just like an all-round management package called system center with multiple components. But was DPM originally a... All, all, they were all under the banner of system oh. center, but now the, 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 the way the licensing works, you, the whole stack is thrown in. Sorry, any more questions? Just one more. Um, does hosted, if you're hosting, say, SharePoint 2013 with Microsoft, does that work with SCOM dashboarding and APM? Um, I'm not sure about the dashboarding with the APM. As long as it's 2010, that wouldn't be a problem. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure SharePoint about the dashboarding. Okay. I have another question. Um, exposing the disk on, in the virtual world to SharePoint, is there any rules that we should follow? 
as far as how many LUNs we create, how many volumes can you create on the LUN, so, things of that nature? Uh, okay, so um, there is, a, in my uh, terminology, the V supportability document, it, it goes into what you can do with your LUNs. I think it would be wise of me to say that that's definitely not my specialist area around the, around the hardware of the, of the Hyper-V. But I believe that there are some documentation that will, will advise you correctly on, on how to do that. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So you pick the, the mic that doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah, as far as for uh, doing cumulative updates on SharePoint, is there anything in the System Center tool that will help you, um, I guess, sort of eliminate or minimize the downtime that would be happening during a cumulative update? Are you talking about specifically within SCOM? Yeah. Um, so your question is, is when I do a, a, like a CU, on, on the operations manager? Right. Okay. So you're doing the PS configs and all those things, so. Uh, if you have multiple management servers, now in 2012, we're not dependent on, on the um, uh, one particular, uh, like the RMS. So you can uh, patch one of your uh, servers, for example, test it, make sure it's working okay, um, and you can have uh, failover clients so they could go to another management server if, if that failed over. So you, you can do it that way to make sure that your CUs go on. So that's that is a great question because lots of people come up with that. And it's, a, it's again, it's a, a working in a chronological way to, to, to be able to do that. So if you have failover on your agents, so like if it doesn't contact this, it will go off to another management server. That has other things that we need to consider how many servers are there on that, you know, if we take a, a management server on and swing it across to the other one, is there more than f like 4,000 agents or something? But it, that, that would be how to do that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much.